Surviving in the deep sea can be a challenging task for many creatures. With fierce competition, no sunlight, and scarce food and nutrients, organisms at these depths have developed a number of peculiar adaptations in response to such an extreme environment. Nearly all the nutrients in the depths are supplied with debris that falls down from the surface waters. The food webs are sustained only by a slow drizzle of organic particles and detritus known as marine snow. This consists of dead plankton, dead animal shells, and faecal matter. It isn't much, but it's generally enough to sustain this extreme ecosystem of immense pressure and intense darkness. However, on some rare occasions, the starved depths are treated to a feast of something far larger. Every now and then, a carcass will drift to the sea floor from above, and it will draw scavengers from miles around to feed on the nutrient-rich carrion. This is a whale fall. Whale fall ecosystems were first studied in 1988 by a team of researchers at the University of Hawaii, who estimated that the sedimentation of a decomposing 40-ton whale carcass is equivalent to 2,000 years' worth of material that falls as marine snow, over an area of 50 square metres. When a whale dies and sinks, the carcass provides a sudden, concentrated food source, and creates an island of organic matter on an otherwise food-poor seabed. Its body can last for decades, supporting an ever-changing ecosystem that blooms out of the barren darkness like flowers in spring. As it decomposes, different stages support a succession of marine biological communities. It is these complex and fascinating stages that we're about to explore in greater detail. It is believed that there are four stages of ecological succession in a whale fall ecosystem. First is the mobile scavenger stage. When the whale first comes to rest on the ocean floor, life arrives at the scene in a matter of hours. Mobile scavengers such as ratfish, hagfish, and sharks smell the whale and swim from afar and begin to consume the soft tissue. Hagfish, sleeper sharks, crabs, and a host of other scavenging animals eat the blubber and mussels down to the bone. The carcass you are looking at belonged to a baleen whale. It is currently in the first stage of the whale fall ecosystem, in which the larger creatures visit the carcass, such as this sleeper shark, which can grow to 22 feet in length. This is due to the fascinating phenomenon of deep sea gigantism, which allows many deep dwelling creatures to grow to immense sizes in order to become more efficient. A full video explaining this phenomenon can be found on our channel. In a matter of months, the carcass is stripped clean to the bone. However, in an ecosystem so devoid of nutrients, when something so large falls to the depths, nothing goes to waste. Now begins the second wave, known as the Enrichment Opportunist stage. Many of the larger scavengers have moved on, and now it is the turn of smaller organisms to comb the surrounding sediment for decomposing tissue. Organic fragments or detritus may enrich the sediments nearby for over a year. It is during this time that worms, crustaceans, and mollusks feed on leftover blubber often burrowing into the nutrient-enriched sediment beneath the whale. The third stage, or the sulfophilic stage, is by far the longest stage in a whale fall ecosystem. It may last from 10 to 50 years, or possibly more. With only the skeleton remaining, bacteria begin to break down fats trapped in the bones. 
This process produces the byproduct hydrogen sulfide, providing energy that allows microbes to thrive here too. The sulfides are released up to eight feet into the surrounding sediment, supporting a rich mix of bacteria, mussels, clams, and worms, among other invertebrates that begin to colonize the surface of bones. Polychaete worms, like the bone-eating Ozidax worms, carpet the whale's bones in a fuzzy red fringe. These animals have neither eyes nor mouths, but they present reddish plumes that act as gills, and green roots that burrow down into the skeleton. From the marrow, the worm's roots extract fats and oils, which bacteria living inside the roots break down. Through symbiotic association, the bacteria therefore supply nutrients for the worms. This discovery was profound within the scientific community. Never before had scientists found this sort of microbe living in a symbiotic relationship with another animal. Thick mats of bacteria cover the carcass too, and a new food web is formed in this stage. At some depths, this allows sponges to grow, powered by the large amounts of energy that are produced from decomposition. The fourth stage of the whale fall ecosystem is one that was only recently discovered, when scientists began to theorize that any mineral remains of the whale are colonized by suspension feeders like plankton that live on the fat-depleted bones. The successive communities that thrive around these whale carcasses show just how important whale fall events are to the deep sea ecosystem. The immense biomass of whales, and especially high bone lipid content, allows their carcasses to support diverse and complex ecosystems that would otherwise not exist in the energy-poor deep sea. They are not only vital to deep-dwelling communities, but to the scientific community as well, for many new species have been observed around these carcasses that were previously unknown to science. Among them are an abundance of new bristleworm species, which may be uniquely adapted to whale falls. With every new whale fall, new discoveries are being made all the time, helping us to gain a greater insight into how the mysterious and otherworldly deep-sea ecosystem is able to function. <laughs>